Hello everyone. Welcome to the session about accelerating cloud migration and innovation with Linux on Azure. My name is Madan Aramugam Ramakrishnan and I am the general manager of Azure Customer Success Unit. And with me, I have Ross Godler, who is the principal program manager in Azure Linux engineering team. Ross and I are thrilled you are able to join us today. There are experts who are standing by to answer your questions during the session as well. Let's jump right in and take a look at what we will cover in this session. Today, I will first talk about patterns of real customer success with migrating Linux-based mission-critical applications on Azure. Ross will then take you all through a tour of new service features and updates, and we'll wrap with a set of resources that you can immediately leverage in your cloud journey. Now, if you think about Microsoft, Azure provides productive, hybrid, intelligent, and trusted infrastructure for all businesses to address every customer's needs, regardless of the industry, workload, or use case. Our top customers that you see here in the slide are already deploying Linux and open source technology for their mission critical and production grade workloads on Azure. Here are a couple of examples. Walgreens deployed one of the largest SAP mission critical production environment with SUSE Linux on Azure servers with 48 terabytes of RAM in each of these servers, which enhances their performance and helps connect and protect their customers more than ever during a pandemic. Another example is Lufthansa, uh, one of these most famous airlines who runs their entire aircraft maintenance and operation platform using Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS on Azure, streamlining their business, and they have slashed their operations costs by 60%. There are thousands of such customer stories like these two that you can find at customers.microsoft.com. Now, one stat that I want to kind of call out is the fact that over 50% of VM cores running on Azure or Linux with a great deal of upstream contributions in the Linux kernel and container projects coming directly from Microsoft employees. Given COVID, we are also seeing customers shortening their deployment cycle for Linux and open source projects from six months to just a matter of few weeks as they move from proof of concepts to production using the tools in Azure. Now, this is not surprising since in Azure, we've launched just in the last year, over 1,000 feature updates that allows your Linux applications to scale in the hybrid infrastructure and take advantage of the intelligent AI services, all the while running on a secure, compliant infrastructure. Whether you are a developer or a sysadmin or manage services such as Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Spring Cloud, Azure MySQL, are all upstream compatible with the latest and greatest updates so you can be at your productive best using Azure with our awesome cloud native DevOps tool set, including Visual Studio Code and GitHub. Simply put, there isn't a better time to move your Linux applications on Azure. Now, let's talk about the common migration triggers. Some of you might be wondering why migrate to Azure at all? With the current pandemic, we are seeing cloud migration has become one of the biggest accelerators for digital transformation as enterprises around the world are racing to make their business critical and even life critical operations always available and always remote. We also see other compelling triggers such as data center exits, acquisition and mergers, end of support for software and hardware, and the need to move to a more secure, governable, cloud infrastructure as you modernize your application estate. Regardless of these reasons, one thing I see consistently is cloud migration is a journey. And I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes. There is no more benumbing error than to mistake a stage for the goal or to linger too long in a resting place. So it's very important that your organization has clear cloud migration goals and know when to rest and when to charge forward. Now let's talk to a couple of customers who have migrated to Azure and are running mission critical applications, Linux applications. Adobe is one of the world's leading software companies focused on creativity and digital marketing products. I had a chance to speak with Adobe VP of Cloud Engineering, Brandon Pulsifer, to share his experiences 
on Azure. Let's roll the video. Hey, Brandon, it's a pleasure having you here with us. Uh, thank you for taking the time. I know from my own experience that Adobe as a company is passionate about providing exceptional experiences for creative and marketing professionals. Uh, I also know that Adobe runs a lot of Linux-based workloads on Azure. Could you tell us a little bit about your tech stack and your experience using Linux on Azure? Yeah, thanks, Manan. It's great to be here and happy to share a little bit. So several years ago, as we started this journey to Azure, I think it was an important step for us. We're excited about the partnership. We were and we continue to be excited about the partnership and as an opportunity to continue to help us kind of scale and expand globally and, and reach more and more users across the globe and, and drive better reliability and security at the same time. And we're now running thousands of Linux VMs, both the immutable VM instances and containers across Azure around the globe. And it's been an exciting journey. Great. Hey, thanks, Brandon. It's great to learn from your Linux and your cloud native journey. As we're entering into this post pandemic era, if you will, uh, we are seeing a, a fast growth in Linux based workloads and customers seems to be deploying their workloads even more faster onto Azure than before. And have you seen any changes in your operating model given the pandemic? And it's been an interesting year for a lot of us in a lot of ways. Um, the fact that we're doing this virtually is it's a sign of that. But I, I would say it hasn't really changed our strategy. We directionally, we've already been on this journey from private cloud to public cloud, focusing first on kind of new things we're building native in public cloud, as well as how do we become more elastic and, and really focus on, on solving for the, the areas where our application stack needs elasticity. Yeah, thank you, Brandon, that's fantastic. Uh, I've got one final question for you. From your experience, you know, what advice would you give other companies about working with Azure and the Linux and the open source partner ecosystem that supports you to successfully deploy and operate your solutions in the cloud? You are such a big brand, you know, that customers, you know, other customers look up to you. So your words of advice would uh, mean a lot. Yeah, I, I think probably two keys stand out to me and sort of through our learnings. And one is, you know, just having a trusted partner um, that we can have transparent conversations with. And, and certainly that's the case with Microsoft and the Azure team, and, and they've been great to respond, uh, whether it's sort of something little or it's something big. And the second is having the right connections with the open source community and leveraging that community. And then collectively looking at three-way partnership, how do we solve the challenges that come up? Microsoft actually made upstream fixes and pull requests to make those improvements in Kubernetes. And, and so, it, you know, that allowed us to continue to unblock and grow on Azure. And it really was a win-win a for the community as well. And so I think just being able to work together and having that strong collaboration and partnership is the key. Perfect. Thank you for sharing your insights, Brendan. And thank you for your time, you know, and placing your trust on us. And uh, we look forward to partnering with you even further. Thank you. We're excited and, and love the partnership and look forward to all that coming next on Azure. That was insightful. Now let's hear another Azure migration story. The cooperative group, the largest consumer co-op in the United Kingdom, is owned by over 4.6 million active members. I had a chance to speak with Mike Clifford, the director of IT infrastructure. Let's roll that interview. Hello, Mike. It's amazing to have you here with us. For those viewers who are not from UK, could you tell us a little bit about Co-op, what it does, and uh, why you chose Azure? Of course, and uh, great to meet you again, Madden, and uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me. So the Co-op is 176 years old. It's an organization created in um, a small town in northern England called Rochdale. Um, by a group of people called Pioneers. They created a retail business, a food business, and through the many years developed um, a diverse set of businesses, a food business, a large food business, a funeral care business, a healthcare provider, and a number of others. In our food business in particular, we started our relationship with Azure about three years ago now when we were looking for a hosting partner for um, our SAP systems. We're investing heavily in SAP to help transform our food business back in 2017, I think, and I've made some really, really good progress. Yeah, I'm just amazed at the incredible amount of businesses, you know, the diversity that you have in the business. Uh, how has the pandemic changed the way you operate in Azure Cloud with such a broad portfolio of business, uh, especially in these uncertain times? I think, first of all, in our food business in particular, we've seen massive increases in scale. So we're predominantly a convenience retailer. Sorry, our platform on Azure has helped us support some of that scale increase. I mean, we run a multi-system 
production grade SAP running on SUSE Linux on Azure. We have internal IT, IT systems that run across Windows, AIX, Red Hat, and you know, through the help of Microsoft and the Microsoft Cloud specifically, we've been able to scale in a number of areas. From a colleague perspective, I mean, we've moved our our entire central functions workforce at some 5,000 plus people to be home workers. We could not have done that without Microsoft Teams running on Azure. How do you see the experience working with Microsoft and the partner ecosystem that supports you so you can successfully migrate and operate on Azure Cloud? So firstly, I think the running of infrastructures become easier. There are things we no, no longer need to worry about. We've been able to retrain a number of our colleagues. You know, it's a good thing for them. They've learned some new skills. That's really good. And we've engaged very actively with the partner ecosystem. With your help, there are partners we've worked with um, that we probably wouldn't have found on our own. Yeah, that's a great, great testament of partnership and how you know we are able to help each other. I look forward to kind of having our teams continue to work together and bring more exciting projects. Thank you very much for inviting me today, Madam. I really appreciate the time and great to talk to you all. What an awesome customer success story. As we transition to our next section on service updates, I wanted to quickly frame how customers can take full advantage of the best-in-class Linux infrastructure on Azure. There are four value pillars, Linux ecosystem support, built-in management capabilities for security and governance, Linux native experiences, and cost-effective hosting options. Let's do a double click. Now, our investments in Azure Foundation means customers get built-in security, management, and governance with tools like Azure Policy, Azure Sentinel, Azure Security Center, Update Management, and so on, that works right out of the cloud for your Linux infrastructure. We also actively work with OS partners such as SUSE, Red Hat, or Canonical to ensure your Linux kernel is optimized and fine-tuned, as well as with workload partners such as HashiCorp, Elastic, Cloudera to provide the best experience possible for customers running these workloads on Azure. And we have Azure native tools that are ready to go. We also have comprehensive and integrated support options with Red Hat and SUSE, so you have a peace of mind you need as you undertake a complex cloud migration project. Azure also provides unique, friction-free Linux native experiences by partnering deeply with the open source community, delivering an end-to-end -end developer and sysadmin experience right from the OS image build management, patch management, workload specific migration tools that help determine the most cost-effective option for migrating your Linux infrastructure to Azure. All these great product capabilities are adequate, but not sufficient without creating the conditions of customer success. I want to talk about this a little bit. This is why Microsoft, customer success is the reason Microsoft has invested a huge amount of resources. Matter of fact, Microsoft has the largest customer success organization in the planet, and my team is effectively focused on helping your organization use these capabilities to achieve your cloud migration goals. And in doing so, we drive product feedback to make our services work better for you. In order to prepare and guide your organization and your team to successfully adopt Azure, we have Cloud Adoption Framework, which is a set of comprehensive design and architectural guidance, tools, code, skilling, support, and organizational processes for adopting Azure, regardless of where you are in your migration journey. Once you have Azure setup done using our enterprise scale landing zones architecture, we have well-architected framework that helps you and your implementation partner follow vetted reference architecture to design, deploy, and manage Linux workloads on Azure across five key dimensions, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and ops excellence. These prescriptive recommendations are surfaced in Azure Advisor with an industry-leading scoring approach to determine the next best action for you. Now let me hand over the session to Ross Gardler to show some cool new capabilities his team has built for Linux developers and administrators. Over to you, Ross. Thanks, Madden, and welcome to Ignite, everybody. Um, I want to start off by providing a, a bit of a sneak peek into something that's upcoming. Uh, this is currently available in private preview. If you are interested in what I'm about to show you, do reach out to your local account teams, and we'll see what we can do about bringing you on to the preview.
The reason that we're showing you this is to show how we're bringing together all of the capabilities, all the functionality that we've been building into Azure for quite some time now into convenient packages that enable you to achieve your goals quickly and easily. So what we're going to show you is a quick demo of how you can migrate a JBoss workload from on-premise into Azure in an almost completely automated fashion. And we're going to be introducing new workloads as we continue to work on this, bring it into preview and then into general availability for all customers. So let's have a look at the quick demo in video form here. As with all migration projects to Azure, one of the fastest ways to get going is to use the Azure Migrate tooling. One of the tools that we have in that toolbox is the assessment tool. What this will do is it'll go onto your network and it'll look at what VMs you have, what storage accounts, what the usage patterns look like, what the network traffic looks like and so on, and help you migrate into Azure infrastructure as an alternative. So what we've done here is we've run that tool on our existing infrastructure and we've discovered a whole bunch of JBoss applications. Now previously we had no way of migrating those other than to just copy the VM almost bit for bit into Azure. What Workload Builder does is it allows us to look at migrating the actual application itself, so be more sensitive to what the application does. So here we see one of the applications on this VM. Once the assessment is done, we can move over to the Azure Migrate tooling in order to create our migration project. This will keep everything together in one place so that we can manage things over time and not get lost within ourselves. It's a really simple process, set up a few resource groups, some storage accounts, a key vault for your secrets, application insights for monitoring the application and a, a few bits and pieces and you're good to go. Once you're ready to do the actual migration, you can simply select the discovery plan name, which is the assessment that you did earlier, and then you can choose which VM or VMs you want to migrate at this time. Once you've selected the VMs, then you can create a new assessment. This new assessment goes a little bit deeper. It looks more deeply into the specifics of those VMs and ensures that we believe we can migrate them properly and successfully. But once it's done, you'll get a summary of what will actually be migrated, what the VMs look like, etc. And you can select which resource group you want them to be migrated into. This allows you to have multiple resource groups for different stages of the migration, such as test and deployment. Then you click the migrate button and the magic happens. What that means is we deploy the infrastructure that you need and then we migrate the actual application. And that's what's new here. We're focusing on deploying a specific infrastructure for that specific kind of application, in this case, JBoss. And we're optimizing the Azure configuration for that workload. And so once we've migrated in, we can see the configuration we've deployed and we can go through and look at the public IP address that we've been assigned and therefore be able to look at our application in all its glory, but running on Azure rather than on-prem. And so there we have it. We have migrated a JBoss application from on-prem into Azure with an optimized deployment within Azure rather than just copying the existing on-premise configuration. So this is in private preview. If you're interested in helping us build this out and making it more feature rich and more complete, please do contact your local account team and we'll get you on that private preview. Thank you. So that's an excellent example of how we can bring all of the individual features together and package them up for your needs. But of course, without the individual features, we have nothing to package up. And so I'm excited to bring you a few announcements about new services that we're offering. The first one that we're going to look at is the Azure Image Builder service. Um, what this does is it makes it easier for you to manage your golden images, to build and automate the building of those images across Azure, to deploy them across Azure. The whole goal is to accelerate the way you can build your images and create a secure update environment and a patching environment for your workloads. To do this, we leverage some standard tooling that you're probably already using to build your images on-prem. And we also enable you to upload these images into our shared image gallery, which provides all of the automated management and operation capabilities that you need.
This works across all of the Azure fleet. If you're using Azure Stack, it'll work across Azure Stack for you as well. That's in preview right now, and it'll be reaching GA general availability by the end of this calendar year. Next up, Flatcar Linux. Now, if you're doing work in the container space, Flatcar Linux is something that's really for you. Um, what does it do? Well, it's a Linux distribution that is uh, optimized for Azure and for container environments. You may be using something like CoreOS already for this purpose, but CoreOS has reached end of life. And so Flatcar Linux, Linux is a drop-in replacement for your existing CoreOS uh, um, deployments. It has a very small footprint, as you would expect. It is fully compliant with everything Kubernetes. Uh, it's fully supported across Azure. Uh, it uses Kinvolk for your active security patching within that environment. And it has all the usual things you would expect within a Kubernetes and a container ecosystem, immutable file systems, atomic updates. And if you are using operators, it is fully integrated with the Kubernetes control plane through operators. And that is in GA right now. Next up, when you're migrating workloads into Azure, cost benefits can be, uh, or the cost of moving into Azure can be very important. And I'm really happy to bring you news of Azure Hybrid Benefit. This is really important to those customers who are using Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Enterprise Linux. What this enables you to do is to bring your on-premise subscriptions and use those in the cloud. We've been able to do this before, but it's been a very manual process. It's been quite difficult to do. You've been, had to um, turn it on with individual machines, and it's required a redeployment in many cases. But now all that's gone away. You can leverage your uh, benefits of your existing subscriptions literally at the click of a button or the run of a command. So we're going to see a quick video to see how quick and easy that is right now. So let's roll the demo. And I've got a portal loaded up and ready to go for you here. So this is a RHEL VM. I created this VM actually quite recently off of a RHEL pay-as-you-go image from the marketplace. This is actually RHEL 8.2, but that doesn't really matter for the purpose of this demo. Um, there's a licensing section inside the configuration section in the VM page. And under licensing, I have my subscription enabled for Red Hat Cloud Access. So that allows me to see this radio button. And I can go, yes, I will confirm that I have enabled, that I have eligible Red Hat Cloud Access subscription to attach to this VM. And I save it, and that's done. So this VM has now been updated to RHEL BYOS. The experience is similar for SLES. So this is a SLES 15 VM. I just switched tabs for those of you that might be confused. It's running in a, in a subscription. And under the configuration page, like just like for RHEL, you can click, yes, I would like to use an existing SUSE subscription, confirm it, and save it. And that's all it takes. And then we're done. So this was the VM update experience. It's very, very similar in the VM create experience. So this is the VM create page. And what I'm doing here is let's try a RHEL 8.2 VM on a subscription. So this Alfred's demo apparatus is subscription, I have deliberately not enabled RHEL Red Hat Cloud Access on this. So this will prevent me from creating a VM and using the hybrid benefit. So you notice over here on my RHEL VM, I had my radio boxes that I could click yes. This doesn't exist if your subscription is not part of the Red Hat Cloud Access program. So do make sure that your subscription, if you're using this for Red Hat VMs, that make sure that your subscription is a part of the Red Hat Cloud Access program. It's a prerequisite here. Now, the SLES experience is basically identical to the update experience. For SLES, I can just click yes. I confirm I have a SUSE subscription. Let's see, I think I have the other fields correct. So I can go ahead and review and create. Things are good. And then I can go ahead and create my VM. So I'll create it. We don't really need to see it finish. Here's some SSH. This is a cool feature, actually. You should probably check this out separately. But that wraps up the end of my hybrid benefit demo. So there you go. There's some excellent news for managing your costs as you migrate into the cloud. But of course, not everything is in the cloud. And as you know, hybrid is very, very important to Microsoft and to our customers. And so we've got some exciting news in that Azure Arc for Linux is going GA right now. 
Um, what this provides us is a single control plane across all of the clouds, across your on-premise workloads, across Azure Stack, and out to the edge with Azure IoT. So we have another quick introduction to Azure Arc for Linux. So let's roll that video. Northwind needs to quickly onboard dev environments from many locations. Manually configuring each environment correctly will be a huge time sink. Azure Arc extends the same tools the team is using to manage Azure Kubernetes clusters to clusters running anywhere through a single pane of glass. Here's one of our dev clusters. This isn't running on Azure, but Azure Arc lets us use the same tools to manage apps, data, and config as if it were cloud infrastructure. Connecting a new cluster is as easy as running a command line tool. Now that our cluster is registered with Azure, we can see it in the portal. Its configuration is automatically applied and the environment is ready to use. With zero touch configuration, I didn't need IT's help at all. It literally couldn't be any easier. Every app needs a database and Azure Arc for Data Services deploys SQL or Postgres to any Kubernetes cluster. The tight integration between data services and OpenShift gives me a seamless and supported environment. Beyond creating a database, Azure Data Services unlocks cloud-based management as a whole. IT can see my SQL instances in the portal and can rest assured knowing the database has the right security settings and configuration automatically applied. Metrics for my databases are pushed to the cloud, making monitoring and troubleshooting a breeze. And since auto-updates are turned on, IT also knows that the database is always up to date. The Northwind Dev OpenShift cluster is running on RHEL servers. Azure Arc also provides server-based management, enabling the same powerful capabilities of single-pane security and configuration. No matter where environments are running, Azure Arc helps Northwind IT audit governance and compliance from one interface. Okay. So there is some excellent new features that we're adding and a sneak peek at how we're wrapping all those features up. I wanted to bring us back to a slide that Madden used earlier on and just highlight some of the important points here. We've talked at the top level here about the native experience that we're bringing for Linux on Azure. We've talked about how we're working at kernel level and image building. We've talked about how we're managing, helping you manage your licensing. We've talked about operating an upgrade, security patches and so on. We've talked about how you can update your golden images, how you can make sure that you are always secure and stable within your workload. We've talked about how you can deploy those workloads and how you can migrate those workloads. And of course, we have plenty of options for supporting when things don't quite go to plan, which can happen. We make sure that we do this through deep partnerships within the Linux ecosystem as a whole. This is just a small number of the partners that we are engaged with that you can see here. There are many, many more. And our goal is to make sure that you are able to run your workloads on Azure with the partners that you have grown to work with over the, over the last period of your uh, operations. Our piece at the bottom here, the Azure Foundation, this is where we really come into our own. This is where we can focus on the reliability, the high availability, the performance, the security, all of the things that you would expect to get from migration into the cloud. But of course, we also have Azure Arc, which gives you many of those same control plane features across different clouds and across your on-prem as well. We're bringing all of that to you to ensure that you can bring your success to Azure. If our customers are successful with Linux on Azure, then Azure is successful along with those partners and those customers. So we're really excited to be bringing all of these things together in a complete end-to-end -end scenario. So let's quickly have a look at, I didn't go to the slide, my apologies. Let's quickly have a look at uh, what, uh, where you can get. Let's quickly have a look at where we can get to, uh, where you can get additional information from some of the things we've talked about. The deck is available to you in the short links on the screen right now. You should go and check those out. Lots of detail there. You can, of course, reach out to your local account teams to get further information. And with Workload Builder that we showed you earlier on, do reach out to your account teams. They know how to reach us and get you onto that program if you are a JBoss customer. Here at Ignite, 
there are more deep dive sessions available to you. And we welcome you and, in fact, encourage you to go and check those deep dives out as well. The, uh, there are deep dives in each of the areas we looked at. And then there are other areas that focus more on the hybrid scenario or, or the heterogeneous scenario where you're running Windows and Linux. And we have some tooling that can help you manage both environments at the same time, as well as the Linux native tooling and, and equipment that we've talked about here today. So good luck. Enjoy the rest of Ignite. And we look forward to working with you.